All right, guys. So I've got Steve's engine and intake out here, sunbathing because my garage still smells like clear coat. Uh, I mean, it's dry, but uh, I thought I'd put them out here in the sun today and uh, let them uh, heat up a little bit so it'll help cook it. But uh, anyway, I got a few little things done. I got the uh, I got the side engine mounts on. I put brand new grade eight bolts in those uh, with lock washers. And then I blasted this little plate and painted it black. And I've got it on with a new gasket and I've got the oil pump push rod in it with assembly lube on it. So I ended up having to wire wheel that to get all the old crusty stuff off of it, the old coked up oil, motor oil stuff. And then I got the balancer put on, I actually put it on with a, a bolt and uh, two length, different length bolts actually. I used a pretty long one at first to get it on there and then I pulled that bolt out and put a shorter rim and run it down. But it kind of sucks. Uh, I'm assuming that when Jim built that engine, he used a pipe wrench to turn that engine over and it chewed up that crank snout a little bit. So I had to go back with this little guy, a little jeweler's file and uh, clean that off. And then I put some lube on that and the a balancer and put it on there because that is a new balancer so anyway that's all done uh but anyway steve came by brought me a few parts there's still something uh coming that's not here yet it's the oil filter adapter for the block uh he brought me the brake line clamps which i gotta tell you this couldn't have been timed more perfect man so i needed a few more 3 16 brake line clamps for this and i've got to finish the brake line but I'm going to do that today so the brake lines will be done. They'll be bent and plumbed and done. So I've got to build the one that goes from the rear brakes on the master cylinder. It's got to come back down the firewall and back and then on the frame. And I've got a brake line just in front of the cross member down there. I've already done the rear brake line section. And it has a union on it. So I just need a piece to go up from there. So I ran into trouble. So these pre-bent brake lines he has are stainless steel. So stainless steel brake lines, you're supposed to do a 37 degree flare, not 45, unless they have been annealed. So if the, they have been annealed, I, I guess you can do double flare on a stainless brake line to a 45 if it's been annealed. So I am not comfortable messing with stainless steel brake lines. Uh, so uh, anyway, what I ended up doing is going down to my local Napa. They're the only ones that has silver brake lines because everybody else has those greenish gray Teflon coated things. So I got a silver coated brake line, 3 16 a long stick. So I'm going to uh, bend it up today and then drill and tap the frame and probably the front body mount or whatever for the uh, brake line clamps. So once that brake line is on and done, I can go ahead and bolt the engine and trans together and get it stuck down in here. So I am really ex excited about that. But Steve brought the brake line clamps today. Now these come with metric screws. I'm assuming these are metric because they don't fit an 832 and 632 is too small. So I bought on eBay a pack of 100 for 10 bucks. And these are countersink stainless steel Allens, uh, 832 by half inch long. And then there's the countersink Allen head instead of, because I went to the parts store and got some 832 Phillips and put in here in stainless. And I don't like it. It just, I don't like the Phillips screw in there because the fuel line ones, uh, they did come with standard bolts. So I, they have Allen in them. So I'm going to change these out uh, to these now. And, uh, and then when I do the others, I can use the Allen bolts in there, but pretty cool stuff. But the brake line, I wanted to get that done before I set the engine and trans in. So <sighs> it's all downhill from here, man. I hope. So really excited about that. Um, he bought the, this is the Felpro 1204 for a small block Chevy. Uh, this is, it has the exhaust crossover stainless steel block off plates in there. They're spot welded together. So this keeps the exhaust from coming out of the head and going underneath the carburetor to heat up the carburetor pad, which is not good with ethanol unleaded fuel. So it usually causes, it can cause vapor lock, especially in the summertime. Uh, so anyway, I usually use this style gasket and I use a phenolics carb spacer, a small one, thin one, and I don't have vapor lock issues anymore, even running the old cheapy ethanol, 10% ethanol unleaded fuel, so. Anyway, uh, brought me those, which I'm not going to put the intake on today. And then he brought me these. Now, these are pretty cool. 
These were actually on Amazon. I found them on Amazon and I took a picture of it and texted it to him, told him to get them for me. Uh, these are called cable glands. Uh, bulkheads i mean they're, they're called a few different things but anyway that was a pack of four and they were like 10 bucks you can get a pack of two for like seven or eight bucks but that was a pack of four for 10 and with free shipping so i thought that was a pretty good buy but anyway what these are for is to run cables wires whatever through and uh, anyway they have two two nuts on the bottom i've got a couple of these taken apart but Anyway, you drill a hole in the trunk floor, which in this case, he's put, I'm putting an ice cooler, an old, old school ice chest back here that the battery's gonna be in. So before I had little rubber grommets on the trunk floor and then rubber grommets in the ice chest. Now the ice chest is really paper thin aluminum and I'm afraid it's gonna end up chafing through that grommet and get into that positive cable. And I don't want to short. So I had him get these. So I'll have to enlarge the holes in the cooler and the floor to accept these to pass through. But I'm gonna set bolt the cooler in and then run these through the cooler and the trunk floor together and then put the nut on the bottom. And then the battery cable goes through that and there's no chance of it chafing because it's going through plastic instead of through, you know, rubber isolated metal. So they have, uh, this is the top right here that this dome nut goes on. Now there is a rubber insert right here that goes in there. And when you, you can see how this is cut all the way around when you tighten this nut down the further down you tighten it the more it goes down to the battery cables so anyway these are just really neat but anyway they they bolt on and i'll be able to put them in through the cooler and the trunk floor and the battery cables will go through that so i done those on my hard top about i don't know six years ago or whatever five years ago and they're just really neat pieces and it just kind of gives me an ease of mind of having a positive battery cable and a trunk mount application going through a trunk floor with just a little bitty thin, you know, rubber grommet. Because you can imagine how thin that rubber is between the inside edge to that, the part where the cable goes through. I just, I don't have any faith in it really for like a positive battery cable. So anyway, in the last video you've seen, there's the handle for the cooler up there. I blasted it and painted it. Uh, I also blasted and painted these two little brackets here. And I went with a silver color. This is base coat, clear coat. And then I used, I had to open the holes up a little bit, but I used some 632 stainless steel Allen button heads in there and bolted those back on. And this back piece actually comes off. So it had a big old half inch thick piece of cardboard in between there for insulation, which I thought was kind of neat. Now the cooler, the ice cooler, it's a vintage one. Uh, I don't know how old it is. I don't know what year it is, but it is an old one. It had a really neat two colored sticker. It was like green and tan and it was called Picnic. Uh, P-I-K-N-I-K, -I, -I, I think. Uh, so anyway, I took the cooler almost to Tulsa to a vinyl place, a sign place, and they took a picture of it, measured it and everything. So they're gonna reproduce that sticker for me to put on the cooler after I get it polished. But I tried polishing this lid and I'm having a hell of a time with it. I spent way too much time on this stupid thing, trying to get it shined up. This, it reminds me of old nugget jewelry, the design of it. So when you go in here and try to pop, try to buff this or polish it, the compound gets stuck down in those crevices, and the only way to get it out is to scrub it out with a toothbrush, and it just ended up kind of doling it back out. It's a lot shinier than it was, but I, I can't get a mirror finish out of this. So I tried doing it by hand. I tried using a wool little mini three-inch pad on an air buffer with it. Uh, I even tried low speed, and it just ends up putting the compound down in there. It's just a pain in the butt. So... Anyway, not too happy with the outcome of it, but it was completely dull gray, and at least now it has a little bit of a shine to it, but it'll still look pretty nice. But uh, I don't know, maybe somebody's got an idea for that. I don't know, but when the compound gets stuck in there and you have to scrub it out of there or even rinse it out of there, it just, it just kind of, it doesn't look mirror shiny to me, and I don't like that about it, but it is better than it was, I guess. But There was a little dent, a pretty hard little dent right here, uh, right in that edge right there and I got on the back side of it while I had the back off of it and hammered that out a little bit so it's not as noticeable but it, it's kind of amazing when you when you work on stuff and you guys know this when you work on stuff and you're doing a little detail stuff it's amazing how much time you can wrap up in one little part so when I figured up Steve's bill for him a while ago he was kind of surprised that uh, he owed that much and I mean I was too but I have a calendar on the wall and when I work on the car, I go in at the end of the day and I write how many hours I worked on the car. 
So anyway, it doesn't take long, especially at 35 bucks an hour uh, labor rate. You know, it doesn't take long. And then there's paint and supplies. You know, that little bit of stuff in there. Uh, so it just doesn't take long to add up. But he said that uh, he didn't think I worked on it that much, but <laughs> it, I, I don't know. I feel bad, but it's not like I'm trying to get it over on him. You know what I mean? Um, but anyway. So I got the gas tank in the car. It's bolted in. The only thing left is uh, cutting the fuel line and flaring it and bolting it to the sending unit. Which I want to get the car up on ramps. I want to get the front suspension on them, put it on ramps, then I'll get under there and do that. Because right now it's just too low to the ground. I don't want to have to get under there with a flaring tool and all that kind of crap. Um, I did put his taillight assembly back in. I had that out because I pulled the wiring out when I coated the trunk. So anyway, now I'm to the point where brake line, get it put on. I'm going to put the front pump seal in the transmission and then bolt the engine and trans together and get them in the car. So I'd like to get that done today because I think we got rain for the next two or three days here. So today's like the last day I'm going to get to work on it. Oh, what else? What else? I don't know if I mentioned it. That front pump seal that I had for a 204R that I bought a couple years ago, brand new. This 4950 national number does interchange. It's the same exact number for sound number four, so he doesn't have to buy a front seal. I have one. I'd rather go ahead and use this instead of it just sitting in a drawer over there. You know what I mean? So might as well use it. But uh, the tail shaft seal in the trans, I put it in when we was doing the drive shaft on his car before the car came here. Um, that was back when we was first trying to get it just to run at his house. So I ended up having to take the drive shaft to the drive shaft store in Tulsa and have it, I think we had it cut down and balanced, I don't remember. Uh, but anyway, I had to go back and pick it up and then uh, put a new tail shaft seal in there and then put the drive shaft in. And then we ended up having to do a frame swap, have the engine rebuilt so everything came back out again. But I don't think the rear tail shaft seal needs to be replaced. But I am going to check it when I get the trans out. If it's still soft and pliable, I'll just roll with it. But if it's kind of hardened up, I'll go ahead and swap it out. And I may have one in the drawer, but I don't know. So I may end up having to go to the parts store and get something else. The running back and forth and going to different places really kind of sucks. Gas at $3.09 a gallon. That is really irritating, especially in my old truck that gets terrible gas mileage. But it is what it is. So that's kind of where I'm at. It uh, is what it is, I guess. Sure bummed out that Jim used a pipe wrench on that crank. I mean, that's uh, surprising, actually. And, and in case you guys don't know, I will show you what to do with it. These are like 10 bucks, I think. Well, it was when I bought it. I don't know what they are now. This is called a crankshaft socket. So it has a little notch in it for the woodruff key. And this fits over the crank and you put your half inch drive ratchet on it. And that's how you can turn your engine over without a balancer on it when you're building it, you know, assembling it, putting pistons in it and stuff. So, pretty amazing. I think I gave 10 bucks or 12 bucks for that. They're probably more money now, but those are definitely handy to have. It's called a crankshaft socket. Anyway, works pretty good on a small block, I can tell you that. That's where I'm at, guys. That's the uh, that's the plan. So I'm going to get uh, brake line done today, and then get the front pump seal in, get the transmission bolted to the engine, try to get them set down in there today, and then tighten down the motor mounts and the transmission cross member mounts on the you know the rubber mounts. And I mean, I can really go to town at this point. I actually think I can do. I can go ahead and put the drive shaft in it. There's a lot of stuff I can do whole lot of stuff so now it's just pretty much bolting stuff together I don't know that there's any major painting stuff to do if there is any painting left it'll be like little spray paint things but I don't think I have any more sandblasting to do I say that and then you know something else will come come up but like the fuel pump here this is a you know just a made in China replacement small block Chevy fuel pump and this is it looks oxidized like rust on it and this is aluminum so I don't understand that um, 
So what I think I'm gonna do is use a little brass wire brush and clean that oxidation off there. I'm gonna mask off the gold cad on there and I'm gonna spray that housing with just aluminum engine paint, spray paint that I have, that dupla color. I have some that's aluminum is what it's called for the color. So anyway, that way it won't do it again. That's kind of weird that aluminum rusts, huh? So, crap, I'm gonna get to it. Stuff to do, thanks for watching. All right, the brake line is just about done. So I've got it to where it, uh, I got a couple clamps in it. It's up toward the top of the frame rail and it, nothing's touching the frame rail, but it's coming out. I did some lazy bends so it wasn't such a hard 90 degree bend. Uh, but anyway, I kind of made it a little bit broad there. And then I drilled and tapped the body mount right there and I put a clamp on there and I'm actually gonna do it up a little higher too, but it's basically, I'm trying to hide it as much as I can. I mean, it sticks out because it's silver, but anyway, I kind of followed the, the body line contour up there and it'll end up being like that. I think that looks pretty cool, but I've got to file this flat, clean out the flash inside right there, and then put a double flare on it. So I've got to pull the line back off, so I've got to pull my clamps out. <clears throat> and then I'll go back in and reinstall it, bolt all the clamps down, and then drill and tap the frame for another clamp up here and then hook it up. So after I get this done here in a few minutes, all of the front brake lines and the rear brake lines are plumbed as far as plumbing wise, uh, other than bolting the calipers on. So, but like the hard lines are done. So that's pretty awesome. I'm pretty happy with that. It, uh, you know, hiding it up behind that rolled edge of that front body mount in behind it, I think it kind of hides it a little bit. It's not so sticky outy, kind of like these are. These are pre-bent, that's the way they came. I mean, I'm not gonna be able to do much with that. I'm gonna try to find a double separator. Uh, it's like two separators in one and put it on the two lines down there close to the front of the steering box so they have a good separation. It's not touching the steering box and it's not touching the A-arm, but they look like they're almost touching there at one point. So I wanna kind of separate them a little bit so they don't rub each other. <clears throat> so that's pretty awesome. So I've got to get my new flaring tool stuck up here in my vise, but I need to get in there and pull all that out. I've been in and out and in and out and in and out, if you could imagine. And then drilling and tapping, laying on your back is not fun, but I got it done. <sighs> it's amazing how much time goes by just doing that little crap like that. All right. Man, I got to tell you, I bragged about this last time I used it. This thing is awesome. That's a uh, flaring tool. It puts beautiful double flares in. Man, that's beautiful. So, money well spent. So I got the brake line, the last metal brake line pre-bent. I might have to tweak it a little bit after I get it put on, but it is for the most part done. I think... I have some Duplicolor stainless steel spray paint. I think I might use a gray scotch bright and scotch bright this down and I'm gonna mask off the, the nuts here. I'll take the tape off, move the nut down, then tape it up. And I think I'll paint that stainless steel because it'll look a little bit closer to this color. Right now this is bright silver. I mean, it's far enough away from everything. It's not really that noticeable, but it's noticeable to me, you know what I mean? All right, that's what I used on that brake line. Not really big on spray paints on restorations, but I mean, it, it'll work, you know what I mean? Stainless has more of a gray look than a silver look, so the, to me it's, you know, it's probably not gonna match the stainless perfectly, but it's, it's good enough. So when I taped off the fittings, I did a long piece sticking out and then used a pick and poked a hole in it and that allowed me to hang it on the wire. I actually did it behind my house holding it by the tape. That's where my fingers painted. And then when I was done painting it, I brought it around here and hung it on here. So I don't want to paint around my wife's car. <clears throat> so that's pretty awesome. That's uh, That'll be another thing knocked out. So I guess that eclipse is happening. That's why it's kind of got an odd color out here. Eh, I 
Too busy messing with this stuff to be checking out an eclipse while i'm waiting on the uh paint to dry on the brake line i'm going to start working on reassembling those brake calipers so when i took the rubber hoses off the front they only had one copper washer on i'm supposed to have two one on each side of the hose and i've got a bunch of them There's even some scattered out through there so anyway i'm gonna put a couple of them out here got overspray on it looks like anyway I'm gonna use some acetone because the this is zinc or cad plated and when they painted the calipers they've got a little bit of cast iron gray spray paint on this so I'm gonna try to wipe that off there's a little bit on the bolt too but I'm gonna use wax and grease remover on another rag and clean these up and then lube them up and stick them back in the caliper acetone and it made that look brand new again I do have some dust ground into them and stuff, so I'll make sure they're clean when I go to reinstall them. So here's the calipers that I painted the other day. So I'm going to go ahead and stick the bolt through two washers. I'm just going to run it in a little ways, and that way when I go to hook the hose up, the washers are already there for me. The vacuum cap I stuck in this end. And the bleeder. If you're ever using, doing brake calipers or disc brake conversion on the front of a car and you pull the two calipers out of the box, make sure when you put your caliper on the front, the bleeders are up. Don't put the bleeders down because you'll never get all the air out of it. Make sure the bleeders on the top.
nice with all the nice shiny hardware and the, the rubber, the color it's supposed to be. Right, the brake hard lines are done. Thank goodness. <sighs> that was a couple hour job just doing that, but I'm happy with it. So I ended up changing the screws out in this line up here. I got the countersink Allens in here. I added an extra clamp up there in that corner because that was a little loose. So anywhere the brake lines were floppy, I added a clamp just so everything would be nice and firm. So I got the brake line. I got a clamp there. I got a clamp in the body mount right here. And then I got two down on the chassis, and so there's nothing loose on it. But the way I bent the brake line is back up on the firewall. It's almost kind of hidden. Uh, that one's always kind of tough to do because, you know, nobody wants to see a brake line hanging out there. I mean, you're, you're going to see this crap up here anyway. But, you know, when the hood's open and you're up here, you don't really see it. But you can kind of see where I've run it down the body mount there. And I put a, a clamp in the brake line. Or the, I put a brake line clamp on the forward body mount and then I brought it down the, along the top of the frame rail. It's sticking up off the frame rail just a little bit. It's not touching it. And then going back to the union. So I, I think it looks pretty good. It's clear of the steering column and everything. So there's easy access to work on things there. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. That, uh, that stainless steel spray paint, it's not 100% accurate shade to the stainless steel lines, but it's pretty dang close. It was bright silver before, so it was night and day. So now it looks pretty good. I'm really happy with that. <clears throat> so anyway, brake hard lines are done. Man, what a what a freaking job. Climbing in and out and in and out. So I bent up a dummy brake line first out of an old used brake line. And I had to straighten it all back out. And then I got in there and kind of bent it the way I needed it. So then I set it in the floor to bend that one. So it's always easier to do it out of wire or, you know, coat hanger or whatever you got first, you know, welding wire, kind of build a mock-up dummy one out of a wire or something first, and then you can lay it in the floor and duplicate it on the new line instead of getting in there and trying to, you know, get it started and, you know, try to bend it and then screw it up and then have to get another brake line. So I always try to do dummy brake lines first, but... Anyway, that was just easier doing a steel brake line on there and double flaring at 45 and calling it a day than it was to try to worry about his 37 degree flared stainless because I don't know if that's annealed or not and I don't want to anneal it. I don't want to, I don't have a lot of experience in stainless steel brake lines, so I'm not comfortable with them. So these are pre-bent and pre-flared, so I don't have to worry about this one. So that rear one, it's all steel brake line all the way to the back now, so pretty happy with it. So, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon. Uh, 
about the only thing to do now is go ahead and put a front seal in the transmission and I don't really like how close it is to my car. I'd like to get it out here to do it. But I can't really back my car out because of all this stuff in the way. So, I don't know. I hate to climb in my car with a meal dirty. And I've been laying on my back underneath that car. I don't want to climb in these seats. So, I might try to just finagle these around and, and try to snake them both out of there. And then put that one back in there. Because I can always put the tranny back here. But... I was wanting to put the engine and trans together and set them in the car today and go ahead and bolt down the engine mounts and the cross member mounts, get that done. But I'm going to kind of see if Steve has any time he can come over and help me set them in there. That way there'll be two of us on it and it'll keep us from, it'll keep me from chipping stuff up. So I think that's the plan. Yeah. I guess I'll see if I can get a front seal and a transmission. <laughs> 